Sit down, sit down. This is going to go on a while. <laughs> So, who are we, right? Um, Mike and I were the producers. This, this has been an extraordinary group. You've been fabulous, by the way. Um, this was an amazing performance. Thank you all. She's Some of you may not know, this is the closing night of our show on Broadway. <laughs> well, some of you may not. You may, may have just shown up for a good time on a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> and boy, did you get it. <laughs> um, so Mike and I, um, I'm Paul Blake. I'm Mike Bosner. And, we, and people, when we came to New York, they, they called us, you know, Paul and Mike, or they said, you know, the old guy and the young guy. <laughs> and so for full disclosure, I'm the old guy. <laughs> uh, and we, we have a couple of people to thank. Um, we'll start at the very beginning, because it's a very good place to start. <laughs> um, one day, eight years ago, the phone rang, and it was a man saying, I, have, I am the president of EMI Music, and I have a show in mind. I want you to come down and talk to me about um, producing it for me. And I went down and met the president, a man named Roger Thaxon, who said, um, I, he said, I've got an idea, there's a show here with these songs, and I want you to put it together. And I said, no, that sounds good, maybe. Um, and I went, he gave me the numbers of all the songwriters, the four songwriters, and I called them up and went back to him about two weeks later, and I said, all right, I spoke to everybody. Um, one of them wants them to do a, rec a retrospective of his career. One of them wants a show that will be a documentary of a period. One of them wants to do a script she's already written. And one of them doesn't want the show to happen over her dead body, and that was Carol King. <laughs> and Roger typically said, oh, I figured you'd get that response. So I said, what do I do? He said, that's why I called you. Do it. <laughs> and for the next two years, that's what me and Mike did. And um, we called Roger and say, this is a problem we're having. And Roger would always say, uh-huh. And then we sort of figure out what to do. He was always supportive, always encouraging. And he gave, gave us a gift of a lifetime. So Roger, I love you and thank you a million times. One more. The woman behind the man, or in this case, the woman behind two men, our general manager, Charlotte Wilcox. When, when we came to New York, nobody knew us. I mean, we had run a summer theater. It was a 12,000 seat summer theater. It was in the Midwest. Yeah, great. Thank you. Don't bother me. But the New York community is very small, but it's very tight. They don't let you in. And, but I knew, I knew Charlotte from 30 years ago, we did some shows together, so I called her up, sent her the script, and Charlotte vetted us for the New York community. She called all the theater owners, she called the ad agents, she, she set us up. She said to everyone, listen, I've met these guys, they're real, and the script is terrific, and it's going to be a hit unless they screw it up. <laughs> and Charlotte, darling, Thank you, been with us for, for six, six whole years. We've been going on forever. God bless you. <laughs> Mike, take it, my boy. So the next big thank you we have is the man who is to my right and the man who is tasked with making a musical out of two of the greatest catalogs of music ever to be created and the man that brought me and all of us along for the ride, Paul Blake. That wasn't in the script, I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> thank you. Um, all right, we have a lot of thank yous to get to. The first one I wanna do, beyond what we've already done, is some of the more uh, behind the scenes people 
who are literally the backbone of this thing. They are the engine that let this thing run day in, day out. They're the people you don't know exist, but that's what makes it so great. It is everyone here at the Sondheim Theater. I want you guys to come out, if you will. It's our crew, our dressers, our stage managers, our band, the box office guys, Juniper Street, all you guys, come on. Thank you, thank you, thank you. the engine that keeps this running day in and day out for the last six years. There is a business counterpart to all of that as well that I want to thank, and that's who sells our show on a daily basis. They market us, they sell us. It's Sereno Coin, Situation Interactive, Rick Miramontes, o and all of our people that keep us here day in and day out. Thank you. More people that literally made all of this happen, our partners, our financial backers, our angels, our co-producers, investors, thank you all. Specifically, I want to thank Sony ATV, Jeff Zine, Richard Smith, Jerry Harris, all of our co-producers. Thank you. You guys made this possible. This, when we're putting this together, they're listed as executive producers. Um, one takes care of Carol King, that's her manager, Sherry Condor, and one took care of, and still does, Jerry Goffin, that's Christine Russell. These women were amazing, um, because, you know, the musical talents, as I said, they all had different shows in mind. They wanted something, they didn't know what they wanted, but they thought they did, you know? And I would always call one of these women up and say, what do I do with your client? They're driving me nuts. And we would talk them through and we would strategize and calm everybody down. And little by little, we kept moving forward. Roger kept saying, just keep going forward and have the show, they'll say yes. And they finally saw the show and they loved it, thank goodness. But Christine and Sherry, without you, we wouldn't be up here either. So thank you both enormously. So those are the people that made all the show happen. Now we got to talk about all the people who brought it to life. The two men that made this thing move, our director, Mark Bruni, our choreographer, Josh Prince. This was incredible six years. Uh, I hope you'll be patient with me. You only outrun Annie once and, uh, and have a closing. So uh, let, let, let's just, uh, I, I, have a, I have a few people to thank, starting with uh, our incredible producers, Mike and Paul, who have been uh, just, just amazing. Uh, and, uh, and, and Paul, who I've known from the Muni for years, and thank you. Thank you for this incredible opportunity. Thank you, um, thank you to our uh, brilliant writer, Doug McGrath. Uh, who has written a, uh, an, an extraordinary book. Uh, the book of the musical is so rarely get, gotten right, and, uh, and Doug uh, did it uh, on this one, and, and had warmth and humor, and, uh, and it's, it's, been, uh, it's been, it was a great joy to work on. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, our alums here tonight, the original Barry Manjar Inspector. Longest running Carol King. She played it for over a thousand performances, 1,250 performances, I think. Uh, Shalita Kennedy. Uh, there, there, are so, there are so many wonderful alums that are up here. Um, every single one. This, this show, there are no, there's no ensemble in this show. This show is uh, is, a, is a, a company of stars. Every 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 single character in the show was. Uh, a star in their own right. Uh, these characters are, and, and everyone gave dignity and respect to those characters, and I appreciate all, everything that you've done over the last six years. Thank you so much. Um, uh, all, 
of these casts have been brought together by our unbelievably brilliant and insightful casting director, Stephen Copel. Stephen Copel, thank you. Um, uh, music department, it all starts with the music. Uh, orchestrator Steve Sidwell, contractor John Miller, and our wonderful, my friend, music supervisor, Jason Howard! Designers, you're only as good as the, the people that put this uh, put this all together. But, uh, Ch uh, Charles Lapointe Waits, Joan Delude Makeup, Brian Ronan, who won a Tony for our sound, uh, uh, Alejo Vieni Costumes, Peter Kazarowski, and Derek McLean. Look around, it's amazing. Uh, uh, finally, uh, I can't miss an associate. I want to make a special moment of uh, a, a message of. Uh -huh. Oh, this is harder than you think. Uh, good. Um, uh, my my partner in all this, Josh Prince, um, who uh, has uh, brought these wonderful numbers to life and uh, and so much more. Um, but I want to say that I came up as an associate and want to make special mention of uh, Josh's associates, Joyce Chittick and Alice Solomon, dance captain Sarah Shepard, as well. As well as my associates, Ross Evans, Mark Schneider, Shelley Butler, and Dave Rotura, thank you. All of you who made this happen and made this uh, HOV. Um, uh, above all, thank you to all of you for coming uh, to the, see the show over and over. Uh, we may, may not be here anymore, but um, I hope you can all show the world all the love in your hearts uh, on a daily basis. Um, thank you. One, one final one, um, uh, the book writer, um, Andrew Lloyd Webber in a, uh, said, you said, you said, so, Lloyd Webber, he loves that, Lloyd Webber, um, <laughs> what are the secrets of a good, of a hit musical, of a good musical, other than the music, of course, and he said there are three important ingredients, if you don't have them, you don't have the show. One, it's the book. Two. It's the book. <laughs> and three, it's the book, you know? And our book writer, wonderful Doug McGrath, I mean, without Doug's book, we would have, we'd be a bunch of people with a great bunch of songs and some innate things to say to each other. But he made this wonderful show for us. And so here is the creator of this, the genius, Doug McGrath. by ignoring me some more. So finally I just put my foot down and I said, I am not doing that show. <laughs> Here we are. Uh, I have to say I've been uh, ignored uh, before in my life, um, probably more times than I really want to uh, go into at the moment, but I, I have never been ignored in such a profitable way as this. <laughs> Nor, I, I must add, in such a joyful way. Oh. So, uh, my thanks have to begin with Paul and Mike. Uh, winter, spring, summer, or fall, they have been perfect producers. The most helpful, the most supportive, and thankfully, the most hilarious. Uh, we actually had five years of pre-production. Five, while we were getting the show ready. And if, if we could get back the amount of time we spent laughing, we could have opened the show two years earlier. <laughs> what a joy to be in a workplace where that could happen. Now part of our success is all the more amazing because Paul, his wheelhouse, 
so to speak, is not this kind of music. He is a great American songbook guy, Irving Berlin and Cole Porter. That's his specialty. I found this out when uh, early in my writing, I was working on a scene and I, I needed some advice, so I called Paul because he's so good on the book. And I said, here's the scene I'm working on. Do you think it's more of a, a one fine day kind of a thing, or do you think it's more of a some kind of wonderful thing? And there was a long pause at the end of which he said, Darling, whatever you think. <laughs> I, I was flattered, incorrectly, thinking he was trusting my artistic judgment. But in fact, he didn't know either of those two songs. <laughs> in, <laughs> in fact, at the first rehearsal of our first reader, he and I were sitting in a couple of folding chairs as the cast was around the piano singing through the score. And I noticed his little foot started tapping. And then I noticed his finger tapping out, kind of bouncing out the rhythm on his knee. And I looked at him and he broke into a big smile, big happy smile. And he said, you know, dear, these songs aren't half bad. <laughs> it's the only time in the 11 years we've been working on this that he's gone for understatement. <laughs> um, these songs are not half bad, well I should say not. That brings to my brings me to my second set of thank yous, which are of course to the songwriters, to Carol and Jerry and Barry and Sam. Yeah. You you think that their main contribution, of course, is this beautiful catalog of songs. But they gave me so much more than that. Before I started writing, I sat with each of them and interviewed them for hours and days, asking them everything about their lives. I didn't want to rely on books or articles. I wanted to get it from them. And everything that is in my book came from those sessions. Not, not actual dialogue, but their tones of voices, their senses of humor their hearts, their anxieties, their fears, their hypochondria, the, everything <laughs> came out of those sessions. So I cannot just thank them for their incredible score. I, I have to thank them for merely everything. So you have a score and you have a book, but that's not a musical. It's not a musical unless you get the right director. And one of the other things I have to thank Paul and Mike for is that they brought us the right director in Mark Brody. From the minute he started, every day, the script and the show got better and better. Now, you've seen for yourselves right now uh, how, how seamlessly he made everything flow and how inevitable it all seems. So I want to thank him not only for the depth of his talent, not only for this incredible group of designers he brought, who, who uh, found a physical manifestation of the tone of my book. The book always, I always wanted the show to have a very warm feeling, and they gave the show that in the set, in the lights, in the costumes. Not only they, but I have to thank him so much for this man here, Jason Howland. <laughs> who, in addition to being absolutely perfect at what he was hired to do, does so much more. In fact, it always pays to hire smart people. And he's really smart, because I remember twice he solved two big script problems for me. Um, the natural woman crisis, and what used to be known as the affair of You've Got a Friend, which we couldn't find a way to And he solved both those things. But not only do I thank Bernie for all these great, great people he brought us, but I want to personally thank him for the patience he showed me during the process. This was my first Broadway musical. I had never written a musical for Broadway before. And, and I was in the... Um, but I... Uh, no. Um, uh, I'll wait. But I had... Uh, I'd been in the film business. And I cannot tell you how many opportunities Mark had to uh, answer one of my questions along these lines, like, no stupid, that's not how that's done, and he never chose that. So uh, I want to thank him for his patience and to say that he is as kind as he is talented. Uh, 
I, jo I joined the fellows in thanking Charlotte, who was our early booster at a time when boosters were in short supply, uh, Stephen Kopel, who has kept the show daisy fresh, and our phenomenal stage managers, most especially my man Johnny Krause. Uh, Johnny was in the trenches with me during rehearsals and, and previews uh, with all the rewrites, and a more able and genial uh, helper I couldn't ask for. So, we have work and we have family. I have been lucky in work, but I have been blessed in family. Uh, you know, I believe my, my job at, at work is to put on a cheerful and optimistic face when I'm at, at work to try and uh, behave as though whatever the problems are, we'll get through them, and if we don't solve them today, we'll solve them tomorrow. That attitude usually dries, dries up when I get home and have the key, I'm just getting the key out of the lock, and it's replaced with a kind of vomiting uh, amount of panic and self-doubt, a <laughs> long time on the computer researching trade schools, uh, different things that would be better. And there are two people every night in that apartment, Jane and Henry, who rebuild and restore me. So to quote a great song, I, I can't pay them back enough, but I can only offer all the love in my heart. And I want to say a special thanks to Jane, because during that period, when I was in, um, turning Paul and Mike down, in her very polite, gracious, waspy way, she was saying, what are you, a mental patient? Take that job. <laughs> And I am blessed beyond Jane and Henry in having a beloved sister and brother and their families, my beloved sisters-in-law and father-in-law, and um, my dear and cherished cousins. The only blue note in, in this from our family's point of view is that uh, my parents weren't alive um, to be here for this, for the beginning or the end. The, the, the good news is the McGraths believe in heaven, and we believe we will all be reunited. Um, so, you know, eventually I'll get there and I'll tell them all these stories, and <laughs> if heaven's what it's cracked up to be, there'll be YouTube, and I can show them clips. <laughs> uh, but so, in closing, I, I come back to the beginning, to Paul and Mike. Uh, I thank you so much uh, for asking me to do this show, because until I get to that heaven, I have the thought, don't worry. Um, <laughs> until I get to that heaven, I can't thank you enough for asking me to be a part of this, which for me has been heaven on earth. Thank you very much. <laughs> said no over and over again. One night, I had Doug and Jane to dinner, and Mark and we had, and I said to Jane, it's a pity Doug's not going to do the Carol King musical. <laughs> and she said, Doug, <laughs> and we had him. <laughs> Thank you, Jane. <laughs> so something that Doug just mentioned that really makes all of this work, you know, we're going to miss having our show here on 43rd Street, but he talked about family. And if you haven't cried yet, you're about to. Uh, I'm going to try and keep it together. But this show is a family. Um, this doesn't happen where you have people run from their other Broadway shows to get back here. We've had marriages. We've had babies. Me being at the top of the list. But we have two on our way here. Um, you know, it's a really special thing, and when we were just backstage before we all came out here, everyone from uh, present and past was dancing and doing their Sunday traditions, and I think that's what we're gonna miss most, is having each other, and we want that to continue because that's how this show started. Mark has been with us for many years at the Muni. Um, Sarah Shepard, we gave her an equity card to at the Muni 15 years ago. Um, Peter Hansen has been the head of our family here, making this thing run. Peter, thank you. Um, so, 
I just want to say that. And uh, Paul, you want to take us out? Oh, oh, okay. So, so let's wrap this up. I think we'll wrap it up with music, huh? Yeah. Yeah. By the way, thank you again, everybody. <laughs> um, Jason, we'll sing the the end of "You Got a Friend" from "You Just Call Out My Name." Okay. So, you just call.